Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. So in my line of work, I quite often have to install baseboards and trim molding for my customers. And over the past years, I have learned some tips and tricks on how to cut perfect outside corners, inside corners, and returns. Okay, so this is my little mock-up that I made. We have one outside corner and then one inside corner, and we also have two returns. So I want to start by showing you guys how to cut an outside corner. Okay, so what I like to do is just take my baseboard, butt it into that inside corner, and then with a pencil, I just make a little tick mark where that corner is, and we'll take it to the saw and we'll make that cut. So anyone that has tried to install baseboard before knows that an outside corner is never a 90 degree corner, or on a miter saw, 45 degrees. So what I like to do when I make my cut is I cut that outside corner to 45 and a half degrees. Better to have that outside corner tight and the back corner gapped. You can always fill that with caulking or whatever, but it's always better to have that nice and tight. No one will ever see the back side if it's not tight. Okay, so what I like to do is I'll just bring my miter saw over to the 45 degree mark, and then I'll just give it a little bit of bump over until that little red tick is in between, I guess it'd be 46 degrees and 45. And then I'll just lock it down so it doesn't move, and I'll make the cut. And it goes the same for the other cut. You just bring your saw over to 45 and a half degrees. Okay, then you just take those two pieces you just cut, put them in the corner, bring this one up to it, and you see that? That's a nice tight corner. Now, before nailing this next piece on, we have a return that we need to make. I see it so many times in my job how many people just cut the baseboards off flush and leave it like that, and that looks hideous. What I like to do is a return, and what it pretty much is, is just another outside corner that's kind of beveled, and the piece, the profile just kind of follows around with it. Let me show you. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just cut another outside corner and a little piece that we're going to glue on the end to kind of create a nice little return. I like to use um, a little bit of CA glue on this just because it dries really fast and uh, you don't have to wait at all. There you have it. A nice little return. You guys probably have been wondering why I butted this inside corner. What I'm gonna do is take my next piece and I'm gonna cut an inside miter like you normally would and then I'm gonna take a coping saw and cope it. Swing your saw over to 45 degrees and make the cut. This is what you call a coping saw. And I have mine set up so that it cuts on the downstroke rather than the upstroke. I have it set that way so that you don't get any tear out on the front of your baseboard. We're gonna cut along the edge of this white of the baseboard and we're gonna back bevel it. So that way when we push it into the corner, we get a real nice tight fit. Now if you find that your inside cope is not quite right, and not fitting tight enough the way you'd like it to, what I like to do is I'll take a piece of scrap baseboard and I'll glue on sandpaper using spray adhesive. And just run it a couple passes along the baseboard and you'll have a perfect tight fit. Then the last thing you do when you're done is just apply a small bead of caulking along the top. So that's how I do it guys, that's how I install baseboards. And with those simple tricks, it makes any job simple. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. 
and I'll, uh, I'll try to do my best to answer them all. Also, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that you never miss a new episode. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.